Fellowship. We want to enter into the time of the word. And we are continuing the instruments of David. Yes, it's a continuation of the instruments of David. So that one you may say A, and this one you may say B, but they are the instruments of David. But we are learning from David, uh, Pastor Chuma, and, and it's a great thing yes. because we need to understand who David was mm -hmm. and why do we need to hear and to learn from him. So let's, let's look at the life of David, Acts chapter 2, verse number 20, 23, uh, uh, yes, to 25, but read from verse 20, just 25, and jump to verse 8. For David speaketh concerning him, uh -huh. I foresaw the Lord always before my face. Yes. For he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. It was David speaking. And remember, whenever we want to worship God according to the last, verse, last message, we must keep the words of David. And David yeah. saying, Ah, I foresaw the Lord always before me and uh, before my face, for he is on my right hand mm. that I should not be moved. Mm. You may rush to think that, Oh, David was so powerful. And those words were really the words of David himself. But let's go to verse number 29. Men and brethren. Men and brethren. That was Peter on the day the Holy Spirit came. Yes. Let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David. Let me freely speak unto you concerning the patriarch David. That he is both dead and buried. David is dead. David is buried. And his sepulchre is with us unto this day. If we are to go to the sepulchre, it is still with us today. Therefore, being a prophet, David was a prophet. And knowing that God had sown with an oath to him. So a prophet knows that God had sworn with an oath to him. Uh-huh. That of the fruit of his loins. Of the fruit of his loins. According to the flesh. But now it had said according to the fruit of his bowels, not loins. Mm -hmm. And we see there another diaper of uh, mm. Apostle Peter. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, because God promised a, a child from the bowels of yes. David, yes. not from the loins. But Peter knows. That whatever came from David came from the loins, not from the bowels. Bowels. So Peter had to say, ah, from the fruit of his loins, mm -hmm. yes, according to the flesh. He would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. We thank God that he said according to the flesh, the loins according to the flesh, flesh. he would raise up Christ from the dead. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. He is seeing this before speak of the resurrection of Christ. So David, when he spoke those words, he was a prophet mm -hmm. and he understood the covenant. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why we had to enter into the covenant and to look at the differences between the covenant that God made with Moses yes. and the covenant that God made with David. Mm -hmm. And we understand now that David was speaking concerning the resurrection of Christ. Yes. Not of him, but the resurrection of, of Christ, Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. corruption. So this is, this is the reason why we are taking the message from David. Mm. It's a message concerning the resurrection of Christ. Mm. It's a message concerning the New Testament. Yes. But it was David... Part of the New Testament, no. no. We were talking about a figure. We were talking about the, the, the shadows concerning the New Testament. Mm. And this also where we are learning concerning the instruments of David, we have to understand that in this verse, there is a direct, a direct uh, substitution of David and Peter put Christ on the name David, Peter put Christ. David, what he saw, he saw the resurrection of Christ. Mm. So when David said, 
you will not allow your holy one to see corruption. corruption. It looked like David himself was holy and God was not going to allow him to rot and to see corruption. But he was seeing the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's clear there. And when we go back to the story where we are in 2 Chronicles chapter 29, uh, I hope you are not tired of that chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, it has quite a lot, uh, quite a lot of the things that we are learning. The restoration order we are talking about and also concerning the instruments of David, we are looking into how Hezekiah is building everything according to the pattern that David had done his things, mm. according to the covenant that God had with David, according to the words which David had spoken, according to the, to the uh, arrangements which David had instituted. Mm. Everything must be done according to that order. And that's what we see in verse number 25. Let's take a reading again on that verse. And, and he set the Levites in the house of the Lord with cymbals, with psalteries, and with harps, according to the commandment of David and of God the king's seer, and Nathan the prophet, for so was the commandment of the Lord by his prophet. And, and God had commanded by his prophets. Mm -hmm. and, and last time you remember, the union of David and the prophets, David of, of, of working with God, David operating with Nathan, mm -hmm. David doing things with, the, uh, with the Samuel, so many other prophets that we see Asaph also. Yes. David never did things by himself. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where now we saw from John chapter 8, verse 29, that it was actually God, our Lord Jesus Christ, when he was declaring that everything that I'm doing, I do it because God has given me an yes. instruction. Yes. You are doing it because you see God first. Everything that I do, I see my father do. The words that I speak are not my words, mm -hmm. but they are the words of him that sent me. Mm -hmm. Everything was preaching about Christ, Jesus, Christ in the flesh, when he came and he was doing everything according to the instruction that God had given unto him. But everything according to the commandment of David mm -hmm. and Nathan. Mm -hmm. You see that? So the covenant is what we are looking at and we are seeing the restoration. The reason why it has to be a restoration is because he is not inventing some new things. Remember, it's not a covenant of Hezekiah. It's a covenant that God entered with David, yes. not with Hezekiah. Yes. Even though we saw Hezekiah saying, I wish, I, I seek to establish a covenant, covenant. with God, in verse number 10 there, mm -hmm. yes. I wish to establish a covenant with God, but we did not see any covenant that Hezekiah made. No. We saw actually him returning to the covenant that had already been made. And we are continuing with the instruments. Let the instruments be done. But who did the instruments? It was David. Yes. Yes, it was David. Yes. So... We are Second Chronicles chapter five, and and when we learned concerning the instruments or the 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 precious the precious uh, utensils, the precious uh, tools, and also that were taken from the house of God, we noted that among the precious uh, vessels that were taken from the house of God, which are as broke into pieces and which also are as gave as an offering to the Assyrians to seek for the help of their gods. Yeah? <laughs> Those vessels taught, were talking about actually these things in verse number 1, 2 Chronicles 5. We, we see gold, we see instruments, we see silver, 
And among all those, we see the instruments of David, which were among the treasures of the house of God. The instruments were among the treasures of the house of God. And, and, and that's, that's the reason why uh, we are talking about those instruments. They matter a lot. But we also saw that instruments that David was talking about, those instruments, they speak concerning tools that can be used to achieve a job. But the first, of, the first thing was to produce sound. We want sound to be projected. And that's when then we understood concerning, because in verse number 7, read verse number 7, and the priests brought in the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord uh -huh. unto his place, uh -huh. to the oracle of the house, uh -huh. into the most holy place, uh -huh. even under the wings of the cherubims. Yes. For the cherubims spread forth their wings over the place of the Ark, uh -huh. and the cherubims covered the Ark and best, the steps best of. thereof. Uh -huh. And also the Levites, which were the singers, mm -hmm. all of them of Asaph and Haman, of Jutatham, with their sons and their brethren, mm -hmm. being arrayed in white linen, having symbols and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of the altar. They stood at the east end of the altar. And with them, an hundred and twenty priests, uh -huh. sounding with trumpets. They were sounding with the trumpets, yes. It came even to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one, Mm -hmm. to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanksgiving the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good. So, so one thing that we noted last time was the sound. Mm -hmm. Many instruments, many voices, but one sound. One sound. You see that? Mm -hmm. Not many sounds. When they began to sing to sound the trumpets, to sound the instruments, only one sound was heard. Mm. One sound. Yes. And that sound is what we said, uh, blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. Not sounds, joyful sound. And, and that sound is the gospel. Because they shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. And we saw what the light of the countenance, that's Ephesians chapter 5, where we, we visited in verse 14, uh, 13, 14, how the word of God is the light. And anybody who is to walk should walk in the light of God. And in John chapter 8, we see also uh, verse number 12, Christ being the light of the world. Yes. He said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. Mm. So the joyful sound, which is a light upon our countenance, it is the gospel, which must always be a guide upon our footsteps. Mm. They shall walk in the light, but that light of the gospel, if Christ is the light of the world, he that follows after Christ shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life. Where do you extract the light of life? Where upon you should walk in, you extract it from the light itself. Yes. And who is the light of the world? The light of the world is Christ. Amen. So if you have the light of the world in you, mm -hmm. that light of the world will be transformed into the light of life. Meaning, the light has ministered life to you. Amen. But also, more so, in your everyday walk, you walk according to the light, light that guides you in your paths. Amen. And 119 of, of Psalms, verse 105, it was clear that your word is the light, light. unto my feet and a light unto my, my pathway. Path. So we need that light of God. So happy are a people who know the joyful sound. Yes. Do you know the joyful sound? The joyful sound can only be known when trumpets are sounded. Yes. When, when, when the trumpets are sounded, the instruments are sounded, 
and one voice comes out clearly. Yes. But remember, whatever you do, they has to be done. It has to be done according to the order of David and according to the words that David actually gave. But looking at this whole scenario, we need to understand the instruments more because the instruments, they, they talk, we, we can't learn about the instruments without coming back to the real instrument the world ever had. If you wanted to know about an instrument of God, you have to come to the true instrument that ever existed and was given among men. And we can talk about it without going to our Lord Jesus Christ himself. Mm. So I want, I want us to go again to First Chronicles chapter 23, verse number 5. Let's look at the greatest instrument that ever was. In the life of man. Yes. Verse number five. Verse number five. Moreover, four thousand were potters, and four thousand praised the Lord with the instruments which I made, said David, to praise therewith. And David divided them into courses among the sons of Levi, namely Geshon, Kohath, and Merari. Okay. So the first instrument that ever existed was David. <laughs> he, he was the first instrument. In, ch in chapter 23, verse 5 there, we are taking note that David actually made, he made the, the instruments. instruments himself. Yes. He made the instruments to praise God with. Mm. David made the instruments and if we are to go to chapter number 25, we will see a transaction that happened. Mm -hmm. Read from verse number one. Moreover, David and the captains of the host separated to the service of the sons of Asaph and of Haman and of Jeduthun, who should prophesy with harps, with psalteries, and with cymbals. And the number of the workmen, according to their service, was of the sons of Asaph, Zaka and Joseph and Nathaniah and Asarela, Asarela, the sons of Asaph, under the hands of Asaph, which prophesied according to the order of the king. Of Jeduthun, the sons of Jeduthun, Ketaliah and Zeri and Jeshua, Hashabia and, and Matathia, six under the hands of their father, Jeduthun, who prophesied with a harp to give thanks and to praise the Lord. So we see an appointment being made by David there. David appointed, and of course he never did it alone. He made it with the captains to make sure that he instructs uh, the sons of Asaph, Haman, and Jeduthun, who should prophesy with the harps. Okay, David wants prophecies to be done through instruments. Mm. So he separates men to do it with instruments. I want to hear a prophecy. So you, your responsibility, prophesy with instruments. Read the last part of chapter, verse number three. He appointed oh. also of Jedutan who prophesied with a harp ah. to give thanks and, to, to, the, praise the and to give praise to the Lord. Yes. So, of Jedutan, you are to praise God and to give thanks. Mm. And David said, you are actually prophesying. Yes. yes. <laughs> there were yes. prophecies. Mm. So, mm. there can be a man who can come actually and just play the instruments and there is a prophecy released. And many of us, we used to think that it's a prophecy is when you come to tell me about tomorrow. Tell me what will the elections come out like. You have prophesied. David said, no, your manner of prophecy, come and prophesy with the instruments and give thanks and praise to the Lord. You are prophesying. Verse number six. All, all, the, 
All these were under the hands of their father for song in the house of the Lord, uh-huh. with cymbals and psalteries and harps for the service of the house of God, mm-hmm. according to the king's order to Asaph, Jeduthan, and Haman. Uh-huh. So the number of them with their brethren that were instructed in the songs of the Lord, even all that were cunning, was 204 score and 8. Right. I want to come back to the, to the matter. How, where did David learn about prophecy through instruments? Hmm. Where did we see David no, taking or inheriting that kind of system from? Now David waka zidza kuti jiporofita chino guna kuitko nema instruments waka zidza kupi. We wanted to know the one who taught you. What happened? Remember, David is the one who made the instruments. Mm-hmm. 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 And, and, and that stress, we can actually trace it. Because he is the first one to have an instrument. He is the first one. You remember in the days of Saul, he used to look after his father's sheep. But, but he always had an instrument. Yes. And, and if we are to go to 1 Samuel chapter 16, let's go there. 1 Samuel chapter 16. Let's see how de- did David learn to prophesy. But before we go very far, Pastor Palo, you may want to, 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 to read Revelation chapter 19 uh, verse 10, we want to know what prophecy is all about before we go very far. Yes. Revelation chapter 19. Yes. Verse number 10. Yes. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, Say thou do it not. Mm -hmm. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Mm Mm-hmm. Worship God. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Mm-hmm. Yes. So the testimony of Christ yes. is the prophecy. Yes. And when David said, ah, what is needed in the prophecy are instruments. Mm-hmm. They cannot be an instrument, they cannot be a prophecy of Christ, a testimony of Christ without an instrument. Mm-hmm. So Bring an instrument. But no one can make the instrument. It's God who has to make the instrument. So the position that we learned in the first instant when we looked at the covenant there, Mm -hmm. we saw David being promised that from his seed, he shall have what? He shall have a child who shall build God a house from his loins, from his bowels. Yes. And what we saw, we saw David in the position of a father mm-hmm. and the seed in the position of the son. Yes. That's the reason why we saw in Galatians chapter 3, verse number 16, 16. that when we talk about a seed, mm-hmm. we are talking about, we are talking Christ. about Christ because he did not say to seeds mm-hmm. as of many, no. but he said, to your seed, it was a promise to Abraham. But we took that because to David had many sons and yet God had also instructed him in the same like manner mm-hmm. that you shall have a seed who shall build me a house. Yes. You see? And we noted the, 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 the similarity and we also took a, a learning from it that the seed is our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if David is the one who made, in the capacity of a father, who made the instrument, Mm. we will understand now that when when David came in the flesh, when David was born, he came into this world, we are seeing a manifestation of God here on earth, just like what we saw in 1 Timothy 3, verse 16. Great is the mystery. Yes, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness 
God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. God, David, God in the flesh, manifested in the flesh. Mm. Mm. You see? Yes. But God, who now came in the flesh, his name continues. This is David. He is the one who made instruments. Those instruments shall be used in the worship of God. Mm. But let's look at David as an instrument first because every other instrument that shall, uh, that shall be used or to, to produce sound, it has to learn from this first instrument. Mm. How did this first instrument called uh, called our Lord Jesus Christ, how did it operate? And if we were to go to uh, the same chapter, John chapter, oh, John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse 25. 29. 29. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. The first instrument that ever was. The first instrument, our Lord Jesus Christ, being brought into the world, did not sound his own. Amen. Or did not sound himself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sound he was God. being blown as a trumpet by the Father. He will tell you, I did not do anything of myself. Mm -hmm. I do always those things that please God. If you have a trumpet, Pastor Chuma, yes. a, a, a trumpet will remain there mm. until you are willing to use it. Yes. If you wanted to blow it, that's the time the trumpet will sound. Will sound. Mm. But without being blown, the trumpet will remain silent and yeah. quiet. Yes. But our Lord seems to put a picture to us. I don't do what I please. Mm -hmm. So his only life as an instrument was strictly nurtured and directed by God yes. to make sure if any sound is to be heard, let it not be his sound. <laughs> let it not be the instrument sound, but let it be the owner of the instrument that will sound the trumpet, that will sound the instrument. I do always that which my father has sent me to do. Mm. And if we are to read Continually, as we continue, they actually didn't believe him and they, they began to quarrel. But he, was, he continued to say, I am doing the things that my father has sent me to do. You don't believe my father, but I am doing the things that he sent me. Mm. So a trumpet, our Lord Jesus Christ, he had to sound and everybody had to hear the sound. What are you doing? I'm doing the things that God has instructed to me to do. But the summary of it, let's go to Acts chapter 10, verse number 38. The summary of all that our Lord did. But, but uh, Pastor Baloy may read that, and I would want Pastor Chuma uh, to also read John chapter 7, verse number this number 16, who want to see which, who's it, who, who, when Christ was on earth, being an instrument, who, who was sounding this trumpet? <laughs> God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's see. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Uh-huh. Who went about doing good. He went everywhere doing good. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He was healing all that were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. For God was with him. Yes. So God was always with this instrument. Mm -hmm. Because an instrument cannot sound without the one blowing it. Yes. So mm -hmm. I want you, I want my message to reach to the world. Mm -hmm. But you have to take my orders. You have to make sure that you see whatever I do. Mm -hmm. I do always the things that I, I always do, the things that I see my father do. Mm -hmm. That's what was his defense all along. But read verse number 
verse number 14. Uh, yes, if start from verse 14. Verse 14. Yes. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. So in the midst of the feast, he went into the temple and taught. Remember, when he is teaching, it's not his message. He will tell you, it's the message of my father. Yes. And we want to verify there, was he an instrument in the hands of the father? Yes. And the Jews marveled, saying, uh -huh. how know this man let us? How does this man know let us? Having never learned. We never saw him to school. We never saw him in the Bible school. How does he know let us? Uh -huh. Jesus answered them and said, he, What did he say? My doctrine is not mine. He said, My doctrine is not mine. But he is that sent me. If Read again verse 16. Jesus said unto them, Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine. He said, My doctrine is not mine. But he is that sent me. Okay, so you are sounding the doctrine of the one that sent you. If we hear you speaking, we cannot actually give you blame because a trumpet cannot sound itself. So you are sounding the doctrine of the one that sent you. Okay, go on. If any man will do his will, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak the of myself. The issue is, if any man will do his will, his will, what does his will mean? His, his will. Whose will? Inini, I am a mouthpiece. I am only speaking about the doctrine of my father. Yes. It's not my doctrine. But if you are to do the doctrine of, if you are to do his will, mm. he shall, you shall know of the doctrine, uh -huh, whether it be of God or whether I speak, I speak of, of myself. myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. you, you hear it from the Lord's mouth. Yes. Mm. Yes. Do his will. Yes. If you do his will, you will know whose doctrine mm. I speak. Mm. Is it my own doctrine or the doctrine of him that says me, me, the doctrine of God? Mm. Mm. You see that? Yes. So our Lord here on earth was the greatest instrument ever. Mm. He is coming into a dark world. That he has never heard any word called gospel. But he comes. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Yeah. That's Luke chapter 4, verse number 18. Yes. Where, where are you taking all this? He will tell you, this is the doctrine of my father. I don't speak of myself. Mm. So we learn even if we say, Pastor Chuma is, a, is an instrument. Pastor Chuma, being an instrument, cannot speak of him on his own. That's right. He will have right. to be guided by the owner of the... Him being a trumpet cannot blow himself. No. Mm -hmm. no. You have to be blown. Yes. Our Lord, he gave us that platform. And yes. we, if we are to go back now to First Chronicles chapter 23. So... The period in which our Lord was in the flesh, he was the one who was the instrument. The world was dark in sin, but God was blowing this trumpet. The God was blowing this trumpet, making known his gospel to the world. And suddenly those in the, in the, in the region of Galilee and in Judea, the, the dark world, they began to see light springing forth, coming out. Where is this light coming from? Because he is the light of the world. He was sent to approach and to make sure that all the dark places are illuminated. There is enough light there. Our instrument, our Lord Jesus Christ. So, in chapter 23, where we are seeing this greatest treasure, 
where David made the, 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 the instruments. We, want to, we can trace the period, actually. Because Galatians chapter 4, verse number 4. By the way, I had, I had also said, let's open First uh, Samuel chapter 16. Mm -hmm. I have not forgotten about that. Because our Lord came during the period of the law. Mm -hmm. When the law was prevalent. Mm -hmm. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. Read verse 5. To redeem them that were under the law. To redeem them that were under the law. That we might receive the adoption of sons. That we might receive the adoption of sons. So Christ came during the period of the law. Uh -huh. and, and when we go to 1 Samuel chapter 16, uh -huh. you will understand uh -huh. he was the trumpet. Uh -huh. But because it had to be a symbol, we will confront a person called Saul. So, <laughs> chapter 16, let's go to verse number 13 and read on. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And, and remember, Samuel was always crying to God. And he was saying, Lord, why can't you heal our land? And, and his tears, because Israel was like a sheep without a shepherd. There was no leader in Israel, even though Saul was the captain, even though Saul had been anointed by God. And God came and said, ah, I have rejected Saul. Actually, what I have done, I have sought after a man after mine own heart who will do all that I please. So this is the fullness of time. God has sought a man after his own heart who will do all his will. But during that time, who was leader? It was so. so. But that time, him coming into the world now, and being brought and announced into the world, it was during the system of the law. And this is what we are seeing here. Samuel came, anointed David mm -hmm. among his brethren, mm -hmm. and we know the story, how, how, how Samuel tried to anoint everybody else. Mm -hmm. and, and later... The oil came upon David. Yes. Yes. We, we are tracing the instrument. Yes. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. The instrument, the, the, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. So he rose up and went to Ramah. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Uh -huh. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Yes. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubled thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, uh -huh. to seek out a man who is a cunning player on an harp. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass, when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. Okay, so we see the departure of the Holy Spirit from the Old Testament, from yes. Saul, because... So many messages have been taught, and we know that those messages, they gave us a picture to understand that so was the Old Testament. Mm. And now David coming, it was now the New Testament. The Spirit has departed from Saul. Mm. And the last prophet of the Old Testament was actually John the Baptist. So the moment John the Baptist saw the Holy Spirit coming upon Christ, that was the day this transaction was fulfilled. Holy Spirit is no more upon you, John. Holy Spirit is no more upon the Old Testament prophets. It's now upon David. Because David has to be an instrument. But an instrument cannot operate without the Holy Spirit. So for the work to be done... An instrument must wait for the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit is the one blowing in any period. If we are talking about a minister now as an instrument, the one blowing is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because what we preach is the word of the Holy Spirit in yes. us. Yes. The Holy Spirit teaches us the word. 
And we learn the word, and we come to you with the word. And that word liberates your soul. You say, I want to repent. I want, to, I want life in me. Please, when can I be baptized? The Holy Spirit touches your heart by the word which he speaks. Yes. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good for God was with him. So God, the Holy Spirit now, it was upon David. It was upon our Lord Jesus Christ. But now the Holy Spirit, the, the evil spirit now came upon what? The Old Saul. Testament. <laughs> it came upon Saul. You see the transaction. Yeah. Now, this wise servant of Saul, he had now to speak, no, Lord, I will see that an evil spirit is troubling you. And, and we, we, there is somebody called David. We have witnessed his abilities. Mm. He actually plays a harp. harp. He is a harp player. And, and it came to pass, and all the transaction was done. David was taken to the palace. By the way, he was a cunning. He was cunning in play. And, and, and verse 23, verse number 18 there, we saw the description of David. And verse 23, it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul that David took a harp mm. and played with his hand. Saul so, so, so was refreshed as well and the evil spirit departed from him. So during the Old Testament era, mm -hmm. the only instrument that was there was our Lord Jesus Christ when he was born in the flesh. The Holy Spirit was upon him. Yes. But there was an invasion and nobody understands the invasion. But during that period, the invasion of evil spirits into the systems of the law is characterized by the colonization of Israel by the Romans. Okay. So when Christ came in the flesh, Israel was under bondage. It was under the Roman, the Roman uh, captivity. I report at Rome, symbolizing Israel under an evil spirit. But when he was born, when the right, the right time of, came where the spirit came upon Jesus, he went about doing good. What we saw there, we saw there, doing good, casting out devils, healing the sick, for God was with him. Yes. It was actually a trumpet. He was exercising, he was casting out demons from the law. It was written, look at his first message in Matthew chapter 5. That message. Look at how he took people from the systems of the law and they began to follow him. But at that period was not actually the New Testament era. It was an Old Testament era. And the word was going forth. And he was casting out devils like that. Mm. <laughs> you see that? Mm. The instrument David was. But chapter 15, chapter 16, Patrick Woods was right one of David. New Testament is a tanga. Kureba kuti kudzikwa kwa madimoni nekuporeswa kwa anorwara zvaitwa na Jesu achiri mupenyu waiva mudziyo wa mwari wairidzwa na mwari kuti madimoni ari mu Old Testament system abude yes ano uya chikorekta mafarisees ano uya chikorekta masadusees ano uya chikorekta vaprisita achikorekta dzidziso dzemurairo Zaito pari, zaitoti mimi muriru, muriku, muriku, woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, you are hypocrites. You are not doing according to what was instructed in the law. What was he doing? He was casting out the demons from the Old Testament system. He was the instrument. You see that? And this explains, this is explained by the first Samuel, first Chronicles chapter 23. But during that same period, 
He also had to exercise some authority. I wanted to do certain things to, because I am recruiting my own trumpets, which I will blow in the future. And if you are to read, Pastor Balo, you can check, uh, you can open Matthew chapter, chapter 10, and Pastor Chuma also Matthew, Luke chapter 10. It talks about the same thing, and both verses are in the, are on chapter 10, Luke 10 and Matthew 10. And we want to see, during that period, he also began to, ex to do a sampling of what he was supposed to, to do after him establishing the New Testament. Read okay. verse number, uh, from verse number 1, uh, Luke chapter 9, chapter 10. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also, and set them two and two before his face. He set them two by two. Into yes. every city and place. Go to every place. Whither uh -huh. he himself would come. And every city. Yes. Therefore said he unto them, uh -huh. The harvest truly is great. The harvest truly is great. But the laborers are few. So he, he was the only laborer. Mm -hmm. He was the only one those days who was doing the work as an instrument of God. Mm -hmm. Then he recruited the disciples. He sent them. And we want to see he cannot send them without blowing them. And he had to tell them, verse number 9, and heal the sick that are there in, and say unto them. And he said, heal the sick wherever you are going. And he said to the people, the kingdom of God is come. Look, the nigh message unto of David, you. the kingdom of God is come and nigh unto you. Yes. This was during the Old Testament era. He was assembling his own instruments. This is what I want you to do. But look, I am giving you the words of David. Don't go and speak your own words. No. Go and tell them exactly what I'm saying to you. Yes. The kingdom of God is come um, unto you. Musa taura zimu, musa taura kuti miracle mani, musa taura pamsoto. Vangu zey kuti ushe wamari waswedera. Zirupazo wanga husati wauya. Nesko zey chokuti New Testament yanga isati abab. Saka, wamari, waskwedera. And we see the same also in, Ma, in, in Matthew chapter 10, but we cannot read because it's the same, uh, same count. But look at the similarity. The words have to be put in you. Every instrument will have to sound with the voice and with the, with the, with the sound being blown by the one holding the instrument. This is what I will do to you. You see that? But I, I, I said then, chapter 23, it talks about our Lord in the flesh blowing the instrument, being blown by God to speak the word to the nations. But we see him also sampling his own instruments. Then in chapter 25, we see David appointing the house of Levi, the sons of Asaph, the sons of Haman, the sons of Jedutan, who should prophesy with the harps. You see that? Go, we want, I wanted to prophesy with the harps. But we understood that a prophecy is a testimony. So every instrument, if it belongs to David, it already has the words according to Matthew chapter 10 and according to Luke chapter 10, go and tell them that the kingdom of God is at hand. <laughs> you see that instruction? Yes. But Acts chapter 10, verse 40, 42, read Acts chapter 10, verse 42, we wanted to see the words also to this new group and new arrangement. What did Jesus, after he rose from the dead, because chapter 25 is talking about the instruments after the resurrection. Uh -huh. Yes. And he commanded us to preach unto the people. He commanded us to preach to the people. And to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. No. Of the quick and dead. No, I, we wanted to tell them 
that they are going to make money this year. <laughs> uh -uh. He says, no, I am giving you the words. Yes. Because you cannot sound unless I blow you. Yes. Make sure I am the one who wants to speak. Mm -hmm. Go and command them. Uh -huh. Preach to the people. Mm -hmm. Tell them that I am the one. He, this time he was so personal. He was direct because the prophecy is a testimony underlying the word there. He commanded us to preach unto the people. The next verse, the next line there, to testify. I like to testify. To testify means to prophesy. So when David said those sons, the sons of Asaph, the sons of Haman, the sons of Jedutan, go and test prophesy. Prophesy upon the instruments. Mm -hmm. Prophesy. He was saying, go out and testify about me. Testify that it is me which was ordained by God to be the judge of the quick and dead. This is the message, my brother and my brethren. And I'm not the one. The begotten one of God. The message of Christ begins with a warning. That's the reason why a trumpet had to be singled out from all the instruments of David. We will talk about that. I am the one who shall judge the quick and dead. Yes. 43. To him give all the prophets witness. All the prophets in the Old Testament, including David, they testify of me. They give witness of Christ. Uh -huh. That through, this, through his name. How shall they believe in whom they have not known or they have not heard? Romans chapter 10, yeah, verse 13 to gender but testify, be witnesses of me, that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sin. Whosoever believes in him shall receive remission of sin. You see the voice, the trumpet being put words into their mouth. This is what you are to say. You are the instruments of David. You cannot blow yourself. <laughs> Every instrument Yes, is controlled by the words of David. One, remember, one sound, one testimony. What we see in Ephesians chapter 4, what does it say in verse number 3 and 4? What does it say? Ephesians chapter 4. Yes. This is 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you, that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering. Uh, verse number three and four. Verse three. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit. Keep the, the unity of the spirit. In the bond of peace. Keep the bond of peace. There is one body. There is one body. And one spirit. One sound. Even as you are called in one hope one sound of your calling, one sound, one Lord, one sound, one faith, one sound, one baptism, one sound, one God, one sound, and Father of all, and the Father of all who is above all. So the sound is the one. Do you see that it yes. has to be one sound being heard throughout? If an instrument of David is to be blown, it has to be directed on the message itself. You see that? So when we saw David now saying to the man, I am giving you to prophesy upon the instruments. The person being given to prophesy on the instrument are not the instrument themselves. <laughs> Don't make a mistake. They are not the instruments. It's not me being instructed to go and prophesy with the instruments. No. It is the Holy Spirit. Yes. The, these who are being directed by David is the Holy Spirit. It is the era of the Holy Spirit now. Remember what he said. Don't make sure you don't do anything. Uh, let's go there. Acts chapter 1. 
Acts chapter 1. Don't do anything. Kana mwe amche na sata huya pa msoro peni. Verse number 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, would thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel mm. to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons mm. which the Father has put in his own power, mm -hmm. but you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you. You shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And you shall be... We shall be witnesses you unto me. Shall, you shall be witnesses of me. Both in Jerusalem. Both in Jerusalem. And in all Judea. In all Judea. And in Samaria. In all Samaria. And unto the utmost part of the earth. Uh -huh. And when he had spoken these things, while they okay. beheld. Yes. So, verse number 49 of Luke chapter 24. Verse 48. He said... Oh, uh, we can actually start to read from this 46. It's, it's, it's a controlled instrument. And say, Don't blow yourself. Uh -huh. And say it unto them, uh -huh. Thus it is written, uh -huh. and thus it behoved Christ to suffer uh -huh. and to rise from the dead. The message of the New Testament. And uh, to rise from the dead the third day. Uh -huh. And that repentance and remission of sins. That repentance and remission of sins should be preached in not his name. miracle money, no. not management of companies. No. Make sure when you speak, you speak about repentance and remission of sins, which only comes through the message already stated above the death and the resurrection of our Lord. Yes, should be preached in his name among all nations. So make sure you preach in his name in all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Yes. And you are witnesses of these things. You are to be witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. Uh -huh. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. I am sending you this, the, 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 what? the promise, promise of my father. Yes. What does the promise say? Tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. Until you be endured with power from on high. So when we see David now gathering men, we are witnessing a New Testament era where men are now being commissioned. But the one being given a commission, remember, it is the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's the reason why he forbade the instrument to sound themselves. Jamuri ni murire. Muridzwe wa mande asata wea. Jamuri ni murire. Muridzwe wa mande asata wea. Yeah. in yes. Jerusalem yes. until the blower has come. Yes. You shall be endued with the power from on your eye. Amen. And you shall be witnesses of me in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Yes. yes. So who is testifying there? It is the Holy Spirit yes. when he comes upon us. You see that? He's the one blowing the trumpet. He's the one blowing. And when we go to Acts chapter 2, we see there how Peter now, after the Holy Spirit came, he rose up without fear now. He began to speak. He was full of the Spirit. And he began to speak the word of God, God with the boldness. When we say, Peter, we are here. 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 We are he was now full of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Tarry ye till the Holy Spirit comes. So the assignment was given. When we see David assigning the sons of the captains, he is saying to them, you are sons of the captain. Our captain is God. He is assigning them to go and preach. But he will preach. He needs a trumpet to blow. The Holy Spirit needs vessels to blow. Yes. So, <laughs> uh, look at Stephen when he died. He was full of the Holy Spirit. Yes. He began to speak full of the Holy Spirit in him. Mm. Let's go, go to, to, to chapter 13. Let's see 
Peter also, when he was preaching, that, that's Paul, when he was preaching, chapter 13, because somebody wanted to hinder the salvation of men. We see an instrument being blown, verse 9. I will read it from verse 8, chapter 13 of Acts. But Elimas the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation which is true to them. Yes. Seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Uh -huh. Then so, who also is called Paul. So, who is also called Paul, the apostle. Filled with the Holy Spirit. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. Set his eyes on him. He looked at Elimas, the sorcerer. And said. What did he say? All full of all subtlety but, uh -huh. and all, all mischief. Yes. Thou child of the devil. You are a child of the devil. Thou enemy of all righteousness. You are an enemy of all righteousness. Mm. Would thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? The blowing of the instrument, the sounding of the trumpet. Mm. You see that? So, so in chapter 16 also, read verse 16, 6, Pastor, Pastor Chuma. Read verse number 6. The one now blowing the trumpet is now the Holy Spirit. Yes. Now when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia uh -huh. and were forbidden of the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. So even in preaching, you cannot go and, and, and start to preach by yourself. No. <laughs> you cannot just go and say, we want to preach. We feel the edge in us to preach. Uh -uh. We were forbidden of the Holy Spirit to preach. The word in Asia, an instrument cannot just go to Botswana to sound there. Because it must be sounded by the sons of the captains who have been assigned by David. You don't just pick by a speaker and go to first. <laughs> <laughs> the instruments, they have to be guided properly <laughs> and sound properly. You see that? Mm. And, and we are in chapter 15. Let's see also uh, what, what Peter had to say. Verse number 28. We want to see the operations of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament era where the apostles blowing themselves. Let's hear verse 28. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit. And to us. And to us. To lay upon you no greater burden than this. Okay. I just wanted that phrase, how those of the New Testament should always operate according to the dictates of the Holy Spirit. They were forbidden to go and preach in another place. And here we see the Holy Spirit also commanding the apostles a message we should be understood. Because they were arguing and saying, you cannot actually believe God unless you, believe you are circumcised and unless you follow the law. And that dictate was not according to the Holy Spirit. And when the apostles came together, Paul, they wrote a letter to the, to the disciples now. They said, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the one blowing the trumpet. An apostle is a trumpet, a pastor is a trumpet, an instrument in the hands of God. They don't blow themselves. You see that? They don't blow themselves. Uh -huh. Let the Holy Spirit speak. Let the Holy Spirit sound every instrument so that the word of God may come and that every man may know that it is God actually speaking. John chapter 14. Why do we need to wait upon the Holy Spirit? Uh, the Holy Spirit being the teacher, we see first John chapter 2 verse 27. Him being the one, the anointing, who abides in us, but he teaches us all things. So the one who stands to teach, ah, hey, oh, we are sick like sound advice. When what in the age are instrument in The Holy Spirit is there to blow the instrument, yes, yes. and the instrument is to send forth a message. Blessed are they that know the joyful sound. Amen. One sound coming out of the instrument. One sound. But we see verse number 16. 
verse number 17, verse 25, read actually verse number 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, the Father will send the Comforter in my name. He shall teach you all things. He shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance. He will remind you all things, meaning you don't have to preach new things. You are to be reminded by the Comforter. Yeah. What, yes. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Let every instrument, let every singer bring out an instrument of David. And let the praise be to God. We want to hear the sound of the trumpet. One sound. Chapter chapter 16. Uh, read actually verse 18 onwards. How bet when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. When the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, uh -huh. but whosoever he shall hear. Whatsoever he shall hear. That shall he speak. Whatsoever he shall hear. Whatsoever he shall hear. But, but the issue is, who speaks? He shall not speak of, of himself. Uh-huh. So, so the one speaking, mm. the one blowing is the Holy Spirit. Yes. Blowing mm. the trumpet, mm. blowing the instrument. Yes. All that is needed is the sound. Let the sound come out. Mm. Uh -huh. That shall he speak. He shall speak whatsoever he hears. And, and he will show you things to come. He will show you things that shall come. He shall glorify me. The, the Holy Spirit shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine. So, yes, you know, Tavane Wano, but you know, you are so loud. E. E. Wamanda, it was in the can I sing a reed? We can, it could sing a reed, sing a reed. We to those one who reads a good ah, the spirit of the Antichrist, dear Nigga, who is a Macadio, the spirit of the Antichrist, dear Nigga, who is a Magayo. Why? Because we, we hear blasphemy. On the name of the Lord. Yes. We don't hear glory to God. No. We don't hear the, the rupees. No. But Apazanzi, he shall glorify me. Mm. For he shall receive of mine. And he shall show it unto you. Mm. Is it the Holy Spirit in charge? Or it's a trumpet in, in, in somebody's hands. Which spirit is controlling all this that you are calling church operation? Mm. <laughs> Let every instrument be in the hands of the Holy Spirit. Saka like David, David instituted these issues. Mm. He began to play the trumpet in the days of Saul, mm. challenging the Pharisees. Challenging soul, challenging everybody with the trumpets, but demons were going out. <laughs> he healed the sick. He cast out the devils in those days before the defeat of Goliath. And what does that mean? It means certainly that uh, the New Testament was being laid to operate. But the Spirit was upon Christ. The wise young man, remember the young man who spoke to Saul. He said to Saul, Mamboka, there is a young man who is cunning in playing instruments. Yes, 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 yes. So the Holy Spirit now is cunning in playing instruments. He will play us. He will play us. <laughs> Correctly and defiled the word of God going forth. You see that? But, but let me also show you a reference. Because a reference is in 2 Kings chapter 3. And, and it, it, it's a delightful matter. 2 Kings chapter 3. Because what Samuel did, uh, what actually Elisha did, he summoned a player of instruments. He summoned a minstrel. I want a minstrel that shall come and blow. Uh, and play the instruments because he wanted now to prophesy. Read verse 1. 
chapter Six. 3, verse 1. Second Kings chapter 3, verse 1. Yes, we just want the history, and then we'll now, go. Now Jehoram, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel and Samaria. So Jehoram, the son of Ahab, and you know, you, you know, Jehoram, I, I can't explain much, but you know Jehoram also existed uh, as a son or in the in the house of Judah of Jehoshaphat. Yes. Jehoshaphat also had a son called Joram. Mm. Jehoram or Joram is the same thing. Mm. Yes. Read on. Yes. Began to reign over Israel in Samaria the 18th year of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah. Yes. And reigned 12 years. Yes. And he wrote evil in the sight of the Lord, but not like his father and like his mother. Okay. So we just wanted to know who was doing it. And when they came, uh, we see an alliance of Judah and Israel to fight Edom or to fight Moab. In verse number seven, they came and they wanted to fight uh, Moab and, and uh, Jehoshaphat and Jehoram. They combined so that because Moab was now rebelling against Israel, he was no longer paying tribute, and they came to a place now where there was no water, in verse number 9 there, the, there was no water for the host and the cattle and for the cattle that followed them. They had to go. Now there was no water. They are facing real difficult times. And in those days now, when there was water, Jehoshaphat now begins to say, don't we have a prophet around? Mm -hmm. Don't we have a prophet that we may now inquire of, of, to, to the Lord of by him? And one king of Israel, uh, Israel's servants answered, we yes. have Elisha who used to pour water on the hands of Elijah. And they came to Elisha. And when they came to Elisha, of course we know Jehoram wasn't interested in Elisha. But when they came to Elisha, Elisha said, verse number 14. And Elisha said, uh -huh. As the Lord of hosts liveth. As the Lord of hosts liveth. Before whom I stand. Before whom I stand. Surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, uh -huh. I would not look towards thee, nor see thee. Uh -huh. <laughs> I would not have helped you, meaning Jehoram. Yes. yes. But now bring me a minstrel. Bring me a, a minstrel. Yes. And it came to pass when the minstrel played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. Uh -huh. And he said, Thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. Yes. <laughs> make this valley full of ditches. And there shall be water. The long story, we, we, we can't read on. But I just wanted to show you a demand from Elijah. Elisha says, bring me a minstrel. A minstrel plays the instrument and a minstrel also sings as he plays the, minister, the, the instrument. And certainly, according to what we said, the, this minstrel is the Holy Spirit. Now, we need the Holy Spirit. Elisha can't prophesy without the Holy Spirit. An instrument, if it is to sound, it has to be in the hands of the ministry. And that ministry is the Holy Spirit. And, and, and if you are to go to Romans chapter 10 from verse number 13, from verse number 13, because this is how water comes now. Let there be ditches, but how can there be water where there is no, a, there is no preacher? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? They have not heard about him. How shall they also have faith in him? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. And bring glad tidings of good things. 
and the prince glad tidings of good things. But they have not... So, so you, see, you see that. How shall they believe? How can water be available? The gospel is the water. The revealed word is the water. But they cannot be the gospel, the living waters, the living water, unless there be a ministry. The Holy Spirit will usher the coming in of the water for both Jehoshaphat and Jehoram to, and the animals to access water. Yes. Victories in the battle, they demanded a ministry. You see, we can go to 2 Chronicles 2020. When Jehoshaphat was also going to war, we see there him setting the singers and the players of verse 21. You can read also that. Verse 21. Yes. But to Israel he said, All day long uh -huh. I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Uh -huh. That's the end of verse 21. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Chapter 20. Verse 21. Second Chronicles. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and, and that should praise the beauty of holiness. As they went out before the army. As they went out before the army. And to say, praise the Lord, uh -huh. for his mercy endureth forever. So those that are going to war, they must be having the singers up front. They must be having the instruments being played. A strategy of war. So, we, we, we are a sober generation. We consult these matters at, 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 at the blowing of the trumpets by God himself. God instructs. We don't come here to find solution even to the natural problems that we face every day. Even concerning Zimbabwe, Inoi, Ataka Gara, Inoi, Zimbabwe, Inoi. We hear God speaking to us and God directing how this nation, if ever we are going to find victory, we are guided. How are we to do it? You see that? If it's a message, all the victories that shall come to the children of God, they have to come by the doing of the Holy Spirit among us. But is there minister? The minister is the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak. You are defiled. Put in my way. How can you say I am defiled? No, let the blow, the, the, let the Holy Spirit blow the vessel. Yes. yes. You don't want the sound to come out. You are not comfortable with what? The Holy Spirit is blowing using the ministry, using the instruments. But one thing that I shall end with, to just show you the trend, I know you can expand on your own. Uh, Second Chronicles chapter 29, verse 26. Uh, and the Levites stood with the instruments of David and the priests with the trumpet. Yes, I have spoken the instruments, but I, I did not do justice to the trumpets. I just combined them both, which is not bad because trumpets are instruments yes. as well. Yes. They sound, but there is a special emphasis on the trumpets that I really like. Okay. A special emphasis. Read again that verse, Pastor Chuma. And the Levites stood with the instruments of David uh -huh. and the priests with the trumpets. And the priest with the trumpets. And I like it because I, I cannot go back to the message of Pastor Baloy. Because Israel had the ordination of trumpets. Yes. And the trumpets were to be blown in Israel for Israel to gather mm -hmm. and for Israel to travel yes. and for Israel to be warned of the enemy. Yes. So many reasons why the trumpets were blown. Yes. And if you want more information on the trumpets, you can visit Pastor Baloy's message. Mm. I also had to look into the message myself to see what the Holy Spirit was teaching us so that I may also be enlightened in the same matter. 
But I want to just bring a, a, an aspect of the trumpet here as I wind up this message. Chapter 27 of Isaiah. That's where I want to go now. Verse number 13. And it shall come to pass in that day. There is a day, and it shall come to pass. That the great trumpet shall be blown. The great trumpet shall be blown. So, <laughs> there, there is a day coming, but a great trumpet shall be blown in the land. And when that trumpet is blown, what's going to happen? And they shall come which were ready to perish. Ah, in there, the are of certain, there are a certain group of people who, are, who were actually ready to perish. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. In the land of Assyria. These are residents of Assyria. Yeah. So it shall come to pass. But these are residents of Assyria, not residents of Jerusalem. Uh -huh. But they are from Assyria. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And the outcasts in the land of Egypt. These are outcasts also in the land of Egypt. And shall worship the Lord in the holy mount at Jerusalem. They shall worship the Lord in the holy, holy mount, mount at Jesus. Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So a great trumpet shall be blown in the land. Mm -hmm. But the trumpet is gathering people in a holy mountain which is in Jerusalem. Do you see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. And where are these people coming from? They are coming from Assyria. They are coming from Egypt. They are coming, they are the outcast. Yes. Nobody really likes them. Nobody really admires them because they are outcast. Mm -hmm. But God, because of the great trumpet, he shall draw these men into the holy mountain. Amen. At Jerusalem. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem, holy mountain. Jerusalem, mm -hmm. holy mountain. Mm -hmm. They are outcasts mm -hmm. in the land of Egypt. Yes. They are from the Assyrians. Mm -hmm. But they are coming to a holy mountain. Mm -hmm. Who are supposed to come to a holy mountain? Eh? <laughs> Who shall gather in the holy mountain? Doesn't the holy mountain talk about the righteous? Yes. Doesn't the holy mountain talk about the sanctified? Yes. But who shall gather, who shall enter into, the, uh, into Mount Zion? It is those that have not lifted their heart to vanities, who are sanctified. Only the sanctified, they enter into Mount Zion. Only the sanctified they enter into Mount Zion. These, the Assyrians mm. from faraway places, they shall enter into Mount Zion. The outcasts of Egypt, they shall come to, to the holy mountain. And if we are to go also to Hebrew chapter 12, we see holy Mount Zion representing the New Testament. Isaiah 2 verse 1, it talks about it also. The law shall come out of Zion. So we are talking about the remembrance of the Gentiles. And we can't finish the, this message without bringing in the Gentiles. Yes, chapter 24 there, verse number 4. Yes. Who are, shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Read it, Pastor Chum. Or who shall stand in his holy place? Who shall ascend into... Uh, who shall ascend? Yes, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? They, which hill was he talking about? Ah, there shall be a great trumpet in the land, and that great trumpet shall be blown. But we see them that were ready to perish. Mm. Look at the word used. It's ready to perish, mm. not to die. Ah, ah. It is a matter perish. of perishing. Mm. Mm. So, those who were ready to perish, they will be found by the grace of the Lord. Tell me their testimony. Mm. Will their testimony be, Will that be their testimony? These who are ready to perish, Will that be their testimony? No. 
when they are to thank God for the great trumpet, what will be the contents of their words? They will tell you, we, 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 we had actually lost hope. That's what Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 11, we were without God. Yes. We were without hope in the world. We were dead without hope. So they were ready to perish. But God, thank God for sending the great trumpet. You see that? Yes. Thank God for the great trumpet in our days. Thank God for the great trumpet. The trumpet of the word. God raised a vessel, a trumpet, called Apostle Chiwenga. We thank God for the great sounding of the trumpet. Amen. You see that? And we are here as a result. And in Gatauri, we are not in the Amazon. See, and in the end, and in Gatauri, we are not in the world. And in Gatauri, we are not in the world. And in Gatauri, we are not in the world. And in Gatauri, we Because of the great trumpet that yes. was blown. Amen. The great trumpet, I was ready to perish. I was without hope. I was an outcast. But now, I am worshipping God in the holy mount in Jerusalem. I'm worshiping God in the holy mountain. Thank God for the grace. Thank God for the love. It is because of the great trumpet. Mm. Yeah. And of course, we can't, we can't finish also without looking at Ezekiel because Ezekiel also talks about the trumpet. But that trumpet also in chapter 33, and chapter 33, you may read from verse number one. The great trumpet. So, so the blowing of the, the, the playing of the instrument was always uh, mi mingled with the voice of the trumpet. But a trumpet talks much about the warnings. It talks about the warnings because the trumpet was the one used to warn people. Read from verse 1. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, uh -huh. Son of man, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people. Speak to the children of thy people. And say unto them, Say unto the people, When I bring a sword upon a land, I am bringing a sword upon the land. If the people of the land take a man of their course, Take a man of your course, And set him for their watchman. Let that man be for a watchman. If when he sees the sword come upon the land, when you see the sword coming upon the land, he blow the trumpet. Make sure you blow the trumpet and warn the people. Warn the people. Then whosoever hear the sound of the trumpet, anybody who will hear the sound of the trumpet, and not the sounds, mm -hmm. but hear the sound of the trumpet and, and take heed thereof. And take it not warning. If you don't take warning, if the sword come uh -huh. and take him away. His blood shall be upon his own head. So, so I was talking about the trumpet coming in. The great trumpet is being blown in the New Testament. But it is the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit come and blow the trumpet. That's the reason why it's called a great trumpet. If you come here and you research your message, and you preach your message from a researched article, it's not a great trumpet. A great trumpet is only great because the Holy Spirit inspired Amen. it. Amen. The Holy Spirit spoke it. Amen. The message of the New Testament is the great trumpet. Let it be blown. Gapabe nemunu achambira is a word. Is the blower of the trumpet who stands to warn the people because I am bringing a sword upon the earth. If you don't take heed from the sound, of course, for you to take heed to the sound, you must be among the blessed ones. According to, to Psalms chapter 89, verse 15, you must be among the blessed ones who understand the sound of the trumpet. Mm -hmm. For you to take heed, you must always know and you must be among the blessed ones who understands the sound. But 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 let's go let's go to chapter six because we already spoke about it, chapter six of Joshua, because of the trumpet. I just want to show you again another scenario where the trumpet was used, 
And a trumpet is there to warn the people. Now, in the days of Joshua, and we already spoke concerning the salvation of the Gentiles, Rahab. Remember, the Rahab stands in the position of the Gentiles. And Gentiles can only be spoken, can only be saved after the blowing or after the message has been spoken and it had gone forth. But if you were to look now, God had instructed Israel because he wants to penetrate into the city. But the city houses a certain group of people which should be saved. And that group of people are the halves, but the rest shall be destroyed. God instructs, verse number three, you are to surround the whole city, compass the city, all ye men of war, go round about the city once, that shall ye be six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of so, the flames on. So the seven priests they shall be holding the trumpet. The seven priests stand as the seven spirits of God. Mm -hmm. According to Revelation chapter 2, the, the seven spirits of God, the seven spirits of God, seven priests. Yes. And the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times. So you are going to compass the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpet. But the seventh day you shall compass the city seven Seven times. Yes. Uh -huh. And the priest shall blow with the trumpet. And the priest shall blow with the trumpet. And it shall come to pass uh -huh. that when they make a long blast. I just highlighted that. They shall make a long blast. With the ram's horn. They shall make a long blast. Long blast highlighted there. So the priest shall make a long blast. But the long blast shall be done in the se on the seventh day, in the seventh round. Yes. Oh, yes. the long blast shall be made. That's the reason why Isaiah said it's a great trumpet yes. being blown. Yes. Tinoda Kunzwa, a long blast. Let every minister come and let there be a long blast with the ram's horn. Musatu Zirachi Matuda Bayana Rakapirwa. In a thicket, we are to offer to the people. We want a long blast. When that long blast shall come, uh -huh. and when you hear the sound, only those that will hear the sound, sound of the trumpet, uh -huh. all the people shall shout with a great shout. Let there be a great shout. And the wall of the city shall fall down. This is flat. how the wars of heresy, the wars that encircled people. I preached a message called Buwag some time back. Yes. And that message was talking about how people were put in wars. But those wars had to come down so that men who were in those wars could be saved. They were inside. But the wars were supposed to come down. Let the wars come down. Those in the city, let them be captured by Israel. Let them be captured by the captain of Israel. Mm. And the capture represents the salvation of the elect. Amen. You see, <coughs> but let the city be captured. Yes. You see that. But it will only come after the long blast. Yes. But let's go to verse number 20. So the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets. They, so they blew with the trumpet, the trumpets, and they shouted also. And it came to pass uh -huh. when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, uh -huh. and the people shouted with a great shout, uh -huh. that the wall fell down flat. Yes, the wall fell down flat. Yes, fell down flat. Here is the good spiritual father fell down, down flat. By it, Kunoviska Chekumi, it fell, fell down, down flat, flat because of the long blow, the great trumpet which came in our days. And we want to thank God for the long blow because the long blow, I was going along Festi Street, 
Then the long blob was actually, I heard a long blob telling me that they, I, when I heard the sound, it was saying, Chegume achicha bisku mungwa ino, kana ochi bisa chegume, urichire eshe chemunu. It was a long yes. blob. God had promised a great trumpet, a great blow of a trumpet in our days. And I heard it. I came back and I said, what? What message is it? It was a long blow of the grace of the Lord, which was coming to us. I, 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 I could not deny it. It was a grace extended unto me. And I want to thank God for a long blow. So many days, every day, those days, Pastor, I, I don't want to lie to you. Yes. Apostle was coming to Gomba every day. Hey. Monday to Saturday. Hey. Sunday to church. Monday to Saturday to Gomba. Sunday to church. Never all night, never all night. Hey. A long blob. Hmm. Message of grace being emphasized more and more. The trumpets were blowing. Amen. And what? we are witnesses mm -hmm. of that. And we, we also became part of them that were taken from Assyria. Don't tell me. It's Assyria. Those Assyrians. Because they had grabbed or they had been given the vessels of the house of the Lord. That's the reason why they say, ah, we have what we are of God. They were only handling the vessels. We are in the days when the trumpet is being fully blown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you taking heed to the blow of the trumpet? The, the verse number 22. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country. Faith and grace will only save the elect. Go into Faith and grace, the two men Faith and grace. Amen. The two men that he had despised, faith and grace will only save. The will elect. only save the elect. the elect. Yes. Go into the Harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she hath, as you swear unto her. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had. So, so look here, if, the, if Rahab is being saved, she is being saved by the sound of the two spies who went in with the message of grace and faith. Mm. And they are to be brought out. Yes. Salvation talks of people coming out of Jericho. Mm. It, has, it talks about people coming out of falsehood. Mm. It talks about people coming out from Methodist. Kuto Buddha Methodist, Kuto Buddha Anglican, Kuto Buddha Fog, Kuto Buddha Wisiri, because the two spices have come in. The reason the two spices came, it is because they want to extract you to bring you out of heresy. Mawanga waka fari wa mchitende rocha chase kutichia uri tukwane nyasha. Mawanga waka fari wa mchitende rocha chase kutichia uri tukwane nyasha. Mawanga waka fari wa of the trumpet. Yes. During the seventh church age, the seventh trumpet is blown like we are in these days. We are witnessing a great move in which a long press, a long blow has been made. Because because of the long blow. The long blow. So, but, but why a trumpet? Because it was used as a warning. Let's go to Colossians chapter, chapter 1, verse 28. Because it talks about warning. A trumpet is used to warn people everywhere. Be reconciled unto God. Be reconciled unto God. Whom we preach, uh -huh. Whom we preach, warning when every we man. preach Christ, we warn people everywhere. And we warn men everywhere. And teaching every man in all wisdom. We teach every man in all wisdom. That we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. That we may present every man perfect 
in Christ Jesus. This is the purpose of the trumpet. When you see here the sound of the trumpet, Pastor Baloy being blown, Pastor Chuma being blown, myself and many others whom the Lord shall call when you hear the sound of that trumpet. We are warning everything, everywhere. Remember, John Zizona chapter 33. Kana achinge apa warning muna akasa terer. We warn a man everywhere so that they may turn to the living God. Second Chronic Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 5. Let's see verse 11. We see the trumpet there. What the trumpet is doing. Let's hear. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. We know the terror of God. We persuade men. The terror of God. We actually persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God. Uh-huh. And I trust also. I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. We are blown. We are instruments being blown by God. We, I, I, I hope you trust that we are being made manifest in your conscience as well. We are manifest unto God. But what are we doing? We are warning men everywhere. We know the terror of the Lord. Remember the message at Acts chapter 10, verse 42. He gave, he taught us when we went out, he said to us, command them to testify that it is he who was who was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. The vessel shall be blown, and the vessels are being blown. Read on verse 18 and 19, where we are, first, the second Corinthians there. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. We know the terror of God. God is reconciling us to himself. And has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. And God has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ. God was in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself. Reconciling the world unto himself. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. God is not imputing their trespasses unto them. And has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. This is the word of reconciliation, verse 20. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. We are ambassadors of Christ. We are instruments of Christ. As though God did beseech uh-huh. you by us. Uh-huh. We pray you in Christ. We pray you in Christ. Because why does he use the word we pray you in Christ? Because he had said, be, we know the terror of the Lord. Uh-huh. A trumpet is that one and we know the terror of the Lord. We, we, we pray you in Christ Jesus. Dead. Be ye reconciled to God. Be ye reconciled. Be ye reconciled. Be ye reconciled. And of course, the last, it's Hebrew chapter 10. Let's see also the warning of the trumpet. Chapter 20, chapter 10, verse 28. We want us to see the warning of the trumpet. You shall hear the great trumpet. Those in Assyria shall come. Those in, those in uh, the, the outcast of, the outcast of Egypt shall also come in. Yes. He, he that despised Moses' Lord. He that despised the Moses' Lord. Died without mercy. Died under, without mercy. Under two or three witnesses. Yes. Of how much sore punishment uh-huh. suppose he uh-huh. shall he be thought worthy. Of how much sore punishment are those is he worthy? Shall he be thought worthy? Who had trodden under foot the Son of God? Listen, those who disobeyed Moses' law, they died without mercy. Yes. But they were they died in the flesh. Yes. But of sure punishment, you are being allowed to come out of the flesh, <laughs> so that you may be given a body. And that body is the one you shall stand with before God, the judge of all. Uh Those who have trodden underfoot the Son of God. You have trodden under your feet the gospel of the Son of God. And have counted the blood of the covenant. And you have said, I don't care about the covenant of God, the blood of the covenant. Wherewith he was sanctified Uh an unholy thing. You said, 
This gospel is rubbish. What you tell me, Chico? The Holy Spirit was blowing the vessel, was blowing the instrument, was blowing the trumpet. But you said, ah, we don't care about that. We don't take no regard over those matters. You counted the blood of the covenant as an unholy thing. And has done despite unto the Spirit. You despise. You, has, you have done despite. Unto the spirit of grace. grace. Going to the works of the flesh, you have done despite to the works of grace, mm. to the spirit of grace. Seeking to be justified by the works of the law, you have done despite unto the spirit of grace. Paying tithes, you have done despite unto the work of grace. Having done despite unto the work of grace, what Moses did to those that opposed Moses in the Old Testament, you are going to surpass it. The punishment that is coming upon you is much greater. It's a sure punishment. So a punishment that is coming upon you because you have rejected grace. Galatians 2.21, what does he talk about? I, he says, ah, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. People who reject God because they just love Macandio, even though he preaches a message which is contrary to grace, they are dying dis doing despite to the spirit of grace. And this trumpet is sounding to warn you that you shall face a much sorer punishment on the day. Yes. Hebrews, you are now in verse 29. Let's go on to verse 30. For we know him that hath said. We know God who said. Look, look at those words. We know him who said. Vengeance belongeth unto me. These, these trumpets, they know actually the one who blew them. We know the one who said vengeance is mine. Sakamariba Chiwuyaku judgment day. He is coming on a vengeance mission. On the day the Lord is coming, it's a vengeance operation. He is coming to avenge on behalf of his only begotten son, whose blood, whose spirit of grace you have trodden up under. Yes. Vengeance belongeth unto me, I uh -huh. will recompense. I will recompense, saith the Lord. Says the Lord of, the, of hosts. And again, and again, the Lord shall judge his the people. The Lord shall judge his people. Yes, that one. It is a fearful thing. To, it is a fearful thing, my brethren. To fall into the hands of the living it God. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Uh -huh. But call to remembrance the former days. Okay. In which after... You were, you were illuminated, illuminated. You endured you a great fight of afflictions. Mm. Partly, whilst you were made a, a gazing stock. For the, this, this 34. For you had compassion of me in my bones uh -huh. and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, uh -huh. knowing in yourselves that you have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Uh -huh. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. You don't have to cast away your confidence. Which has great It has a great recompense, recompense of, reward. of reward. So, cast not your faith. Cast not your recompense. Mm. The confidence of your faith in Christ mm. is not something to tread with, mm. to cast away, mm. because he said, vengeance, vengeance is mine. mine. So, on the day, he is coming to avenge on the on his only begotten son. Manawangu wakata ziwa na wanu yu. Nyasha za waka pavanu waka zizidza waka zizika tika pakisi waka ti iwewe haubetzeri. Saka na yeso zonto na kutiva on your behalf. God wants to avenge for his son. That's the purpose of the instrument. That's the purpose of the trumpet. We warn you, we warn men everywhere to turn from the vanities and tend to the living God. That's the reason why Hezekiah had to bring the order of the instruments. Let the order of the instruments be done 
according to, to David's see demand. David had actually set an instrument plan. He invented the instruments, and whenever you hear the instrument blowing, whenever you hear the sound of the instrument, actually, it is the instrument warning you. Reorder, restoration of this order, restoration of the order of the instruments of David. Amen. Amen. The instruments of David, my dear pastors, uh, is concluded. <laughs> yes, but we can only stop. stop. <laughs> there are so many other issues. Yes. <laughs> but each instrument must produce the sound. Yes. And we are warned the trumpet. But I want to thank God for that trumpet, the great trumpet pastor according to Isaiah 27, oh. which blew the long, long, and long we blast. heard it. <laughs> yes. A long blast indeed. Long blast. We, we thank the Lord for the long blast. And uh, yes, the, evangel the, the evangelist Trumpet should always blow like that yes. uh, to warn the people of the great day of the Lord. Uh, maybe the church may become complacent and then start to despite uh, the, the sacrifice of the Lord, the suffering of Christ, which we may do maybe in the form of not upholding the doctrine or it may be through our conduct. So the evangelist comes to blow this trumpet uh, and warn the people, warn the world. The day of the Lord is coming. He says, vengeance is mine and I will recompense. So whatever we do, we should be reminded of that. Uh, I'm reminded of Joel chapter 2, verse 1. Joel chapter 2, verse 1. Yes. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Yes. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, yes, for yes. it is nigh at hand. Uh -huh. So this is always the, the ministration. This is what the apostles would do. They will preach as if judgment uh, day is coming the next minute. Yes. They will not preach as if judgment is coming some other time. They will always say judgment is by the corner. So today is the day of your repentance. Today is the day of your um, deliverance. So when the trumpet is blown like this, we should all, all also examine ourselves and see and check whether we're still in the, in, the, in the way. So what a message, Pastor Chuma. Yes. Yes, it was a, an amazing message. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 13, the trumpeters and the singers were as one to make one sound. Mm -hmm. One sound. And I really enjoyed it when the evangelist, my follower, was, uh, was, was, was teaching us there. He says that uh, the instrument itself cannot blow and make a sound. Mm -hmm. There has to be one behind it. And the one behind it is Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, Holy Spirit cannot blow a sound that says that you must get a good marriage, mm -hmm. you must get a BMW, a car, you must get all these, all these earthly things. No, the issue is salvation. <laughs> it blows a sound for our own salvation. Yes. As we saw with the relay, <clears throat> the relay sermons, three ministers blew a sound, one sound during the wedding feast. Our mother blew a sound during the course of the week. It was the same sound that the other ministers blew. And the result, they were talking about Christ. That means Holy Spirit was holding those instruments to blow that one sound. What a message. I really thank God for this message, Evangelist and Pastor Paloy. Yes, Pastor Chuma, you see that the the long blast, it has got various connotations. Mm. Um, 
The first one being sometimes the time that we spend in the Word, uh, listening to the Word of God. Yes. It, it signifies the long blast. Mm. It also has another connotation of, of emphasis. Mm. Uh, if it is a long blast, it, everyone else should stop and take heed. Mm. There is an emphasis of uh, what, what message the Lord is really transferring uh, to the world. And also, uh, many other connotations, remember we are in the Lydessian Church Age, mm. and in this Lydessian Church Age, we also have seen this long blast, mm. right tracing from the days of the Apostles, the early Apostles, up to this day. The same message continues to be re reiterated and re-emphasized. It's also a long blast. So it's not only about the time spent in the Word. It may be 30 minutes, but long blast of a message. Yes. In terms of the, the depth, the mysteries of God that are being preached there. Mm. The whole emphasis is for us to hear the same message. Holy Spirit coming there to actually... Uh, bring an alarm uh, to what God is saying. And I was also um, looking at it as in the, uh, when, the, when, the, when the Lord said, Holy Spirit will come from the Father, and when the Holy Spirit comes now, who is going to blow the trumpet? He is not going to speak of his own, but whatsoever he has heard, or whatsoever he shall hear, that he will also speak. And if you look at the way trumpets are blown, you need the, what, can, what I can call the, 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 the air that comes out of a man. Yes. Mm. You have to, to breathe out. Mm. Yes. Huh? Yes. yes. This is what he did when he, he, in John chapter 20. He breathed uh, the Holy Spirit yes. to them, yes. to, the, to the apostles. Mm. You, you need to, 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 to breathe out which means it is that, <clears throat> that air that comes out from, from a person that then produces the sound yes, if it yes. enters into the, into the, into the, into the trumpet. Mm -hmm. So yes. the, you cannot find that, <laughs> that yeah. air alone. If you put the trumpet there, you then need a man yeah. Yeah, who yeah. then blows into this, yes. into this trumpet. Mm -hmm. So that illustration comes out clearly. Mm -hmm. Because there's no way, if we are going to hear another message, remember of what happened in Acts chapter 1, mm -hmm. uh, before the Holy Spirit came, Peter stood up and he preached. Huh? Mm -hmm. yes. But the Holy Spirit was not yet sent down uh, from heaven. Mm -hmm. But look at what message he preached. It is not the joyful sound. Yes. Uh, it is another sound, a heretic and, mm -hmm. and, and, and blasphemous sound that he produced, only and until the Holy Spirit was sent down from heaven, then we, we begin to see now the joyful sound, the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ coming out from that message. So it doesn't matter whether it's a pastor, it's a teacher, it's an evangelist, or it's an apostle, what we see, we see the same message uh, being, being preached to the people. But what are we being warned for? The day of the Lord is coming. Amen. So we should be alert, we should be watchful, and we should be sober, waiting for that day. What a message, Mfangeri, yes. Mchenda Mwari Sukuru, the message yaga, yaga daikunaka. Yes, indeed. We thank God for such, uh, for that message, and uh, we are learning, and the Lord is continue, continuing to equip us mm. with His Word, and we are being uh, perfected by the gospel every time it comes. But we want to thank God uh, for the enlightenment and for the word. We shall continue to strengthen us the restoration order, uh, the working that we continue to see uh, the Lord doing by his word and restoring us to the platform and to the order which we ought to walk in warning every man, casting out devils. Everywhere devils are filled, they are plenty. Mujad Zinga Pastor, Israel, Tijaita Maotrich, 
Tandanisana ne mwe chuna chechi. Because mwe chuna yacho inoparidza nema. Saka tinoto uya toto itaura. Mwe ya wakati, mwe ya wakati. Ningi ano kuparizira inema. Because anenge akasikiri kwa ni mwe ya wechina. But we want to really let you know that the word of God shall always be defended mm. in this ministry and the furtherance of the gospel also shall continue in us. Stay alert anytime you may hear a calling to the sound of the trumpet. Mm. Anytime. So you may hear a call of the trumpet tonight, tomorrow, any day, anytime. You know this is this is Ziklag. You are surprised. Ah, it's a service today. Where, is it a bonus service mm -hmm. or what? But we know because the trumpet is being blown by the Holy Spirit and wherever he directs and wherever he dictates, we follow suit and we make sure we gather as the Lord uh, commands and we want also men everywhere to do the same. Uh, yes, uh, let me pray. Let me pray for you right now, wherever you are, lift up your hand. Thank you, Lord, for the word, and thank you for your ministration upon our lives. Thank you for give, granting us understanding that we may understand the mysteries of your word, which you have promised and which you have given unto us. We want to thank you because even as we saw the victories which came by your word, which came when the trumpets were blown, when the instruments were played. We thank you that the same word is ministering, what that same word is ministering into our lives. And we have heard and testified of many testimonies which the word was able to do and what the word continues to do in our lives. And we want to thank you for the healings that it brought. We want to thank you for the deliverance from evil spirits that it brought. I want to thank you for touching the lives of your people by the same word which proceeded out of your own blowing of the trumpet. We want to acknowledge the great working of your power in us, the great uh, working of your power in our lives to transform us so that we may overcome even in our daily lives things that used to overcome us that we may be victorious by the word of God. Mm. And we want to thank you for that victory even to them that were lame, them that were staggering. By this word, you continue to, strut, to strengthen, you continue to bind our hearts, you continue to lift us up. I pray right now, even for every sick child of God, wherever uh, that child is and is straight, uh, is hoping and lifting up that hand wherever they are, I minister that healing upon their lives because you are the healer. I speak a healing upon their bodies. I speak a healing upon their minds, upon their flesh, upon their blood, upon their hearts, upon their systems. Everywhere there is illness, everywhere where there is sickness and disease. I flush it out and I speak your healing. I speak that healing to be upon them from this time forth. You shall continue to be glorified, Father, even through the lives of your children. And you shall, they shall continue to witness your victories as they continue to sit and to listen to the sound of the trumpet, to the sound of the instruments of David. That is one sound, the sound of the word of God, which is able to establish us and to give us an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Thank you for strengthening the feeble. Thank you for strengthening the weak. Thank you even for touching the hearts, even upon the hearts of them that are actually in their sins, for convicting them that they may come to repentance and for giving them a heart of understanding. May your name forever be glorified. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. We thank God for reaching out and we thank God for touching you by this message. And may God continue to protect you. We are not, we are a sober generation. Till we, we meet again, I say it's bye-bye uh, from us, from Pastor Baloy, from Pastor Chuma, from those behind the scenes. You cannot see 
but they are working flat out and we want to thank God for their commitment to the work. To God be the glory. Till we meet again. Bye-bye.